Thanks very much, Dennis, for the introduction, and um, I thank the, uh, the program committee, the organising committee, for uh, allowing this uh, short little segment on here to share with you some, some work that uh, Angus Australia has done in uh, combination with them. Actually, I've listed there the people who have done the work. Um, Ken Bryan was a project officer that we uh, were fortunate enough to be able to employ um, under the MLO program. Um, uh, it was a training exercise for Ken, but we got some very useful uh, information out of it. Uh, Carl Teslin, who's the breed development and innovation manager, the, the technical, technical man who uh, supervised the work. Um, I'm here giving the presentation. I'm the CEO, so everyone knows CEOs actually don't do the work. They just uh, talk about it. Um, and, of course, in, in the audience, instrumental in this conference, uh, um, oversaw the project from an MLA's perspective. And, and Liz's experience of Northern Australia was a great um, asset to the project and gave, gave us some great guidance. So, um, as I say, I'm just uh, really delivering the message. Um, I was uh, really pleased to see last night the, um, the acknowledgement of Paul Smith from Tyon Station as the NABRAC uh, recipient of the NABRAC Producer Medal. Um, Paul has been a great contributor to the industry, and uh, here's a little photograph that um, when we, in fact, it's uh, um, not very stretched, but it looks better up there. Uh, when we want to uh, impress um, overseas people about how hardy these Australian Angus cattle are, we always get a photograph from Tyon Station because there's rarely any, uh, this is, there's rarely any grass, and there's usually camels in the background. But it really does show that um, Angus cattle uh, don't just thrive on the on the green pasture. Um, uh, in the southern areas. Uh, Angus cattle have evolved from that Scottish breed that these days can um, thrive throughout the world. And the motivation behind this, this bit of work was uh, of interest in the use of not just Angus but Bostaurus genetics in northern Australia, ma mainly to increase market options and market flexibility, I guess. But, uh, coupled with that over the last um, decade or so, when people, various people have tried using Bostaurus genetics, uh, further north they go, some of them uh, have, have come up with lots of challenges and, uh, and very responses in terms of uh, performance and survivability of those cattle. So that started to really understand a bit better um, the very variation that's, that's out there. Uh, just a few more cows at Tyon Station. So um, uh, the, the, what we called internal object, we really had two objectives. The first one was to see whether or not we could identify and quantify a bit better the benefits of, of using uh, Angus and Bostaurus genetics in the north. More importantly, as I mentioned, to identify some uh, best management practices. Amongst those practices out there that people are using to achieve adaptation and, and get good performance um, out of Taurus, either through a straight bred or a, a cross bred um, animal in the north and achieve their survivability, to use that knowledge and put together some, some best, best management practices. Um, for me, from a, I, I come mainly from a, a quantitative research background. It was uh, quite difficult for me to get my head around a research project where the information, the data we got, was a, very much of a, um, uh, a subjective nature. Most of the, you know, we get lots of opinions and put all those opinions together and try and come up with some best management practices. Unfortunately, there's very little hard data to support a lot of this stuff, so it's really just based on uh, on knowledge and experience of, of lots of producers that we surveyed. So the approach was taken was to interview an, a number of um, people, uh, mainly in, in the southern part of Australia, who supply bulls uh, into southern Queensland and, and down into New South Wales and even as far south as Victoria, where the people that have supplied Angus bulls into various parts of northern Australia. Find out from those suppliers what they believed uh, were the important things to achieve good performance in the north and also to find out from them uh, some of their um, people that they've supplied bulls to that we could then go and talk about. Uh, we then interviewed, um, uh, this is their project officer, interviewed um, uh, some commercial users then, uh, about four um, uh, across the north uh, and, and to obtain their feedback on terms of the performance. Also included in that was uh, discussions with uh, quite a few extension staff, um, research people and consultants, and all of them actually contributed to that work and, and assisted uh, Ken in putting together the, uh, the recommendations. So as I say, the, the idea was then to develop recommendations, and of course you can't just have a patient with such a complicated thing of, of getting an animal uh, adapted to uh, um, uh, survivability and performance in northern Australia. So to a degree the recommendations need to be customised depending on the particular stressors that um, uh, the environment they're going into. So to some extent. Uh, the, the graphic there shows the, um, 
uh, the distribution. So the blue, the blue dots were the bull supplier. So some here in southern area down into uh, into um, southern Australia, basically, and, and also in the west, so into the north. The yellow uh, little balloons are the location, uh, roughly speaking, of where the um, northern producers were that actually uh, used uh, primarily Angus uh, straight-bred Angus bulls, but in some cases uh, cross uh, um, crossbred bulls that had some tourist. Uh, content in them uh, and there was a couple of feed in the process. So uh, not necessarily a huge study but those producers were carefully selected such that um, uh, we had a, a range of, of experiences in terms of their, uh, of their use of, of bulls. So just a few photographs um, uh, of uh, equations that uh, Ken was able to, 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 to look at where Angus either straight bred or cross bred um, Angus uh, we, were used um, in, in various situations in the north. Uh, some of you uh, in the audience might even recognise some of these animals or tags. Um, I suppose the point here is that it's really about generating not necessarily straight bred Angus cattle to live in the north, that's fairly unrealistic in large parts of the north, but to you try some of the, the benefits of, of um, uh, these animals, or these genetics, uh, mainly in a, in a crossbreeding system type context. So in terms of the benefits, um, essentially, I don't think much of this is new to, to people in this audience, but really access uh, to a, a greater range of market um, options, particularly uh, uh, where MSA um, premiums might be available, uh, increase in the value of feeder steers and, and uh, crossbred heifers. Um, of course, the benefits of, of uh, hybrid vigor or heterosis uh, in, in uh, generating crossbred animals, um, and of course, things like poldness, uh, the libido, um, I'm not sure whether it's true, but uh, you know the, the reports of greater libido in uh, some of these uh, animals uh, relative to the northern cattle, and of course again crossbred that, that improved fertility in, in crossbred heifers. So these are some of the benefits, uh, and and we didn't succeed in getting much hard data. We've got a little bit of hard data, but not much hard data in terms of quantifying those benefits. But I'm sure that they're the sorts of benefits that um, you know that, that you often would hear from. Uh, the motivating factors, I suppose, of why they might be wanting to utilise tourist genetics in, in the north. Of course, it comes with challenges. Lots of challenges and things that were quoted to us are the bulls that tend to be high, uh, higher priced, uh, particularly, say, Angus bulls, where there is a strong southern demand for those bulls as well. Uh, perceptions on heat tolerance, particularly in relation to coat colour. You know, do those black hided animals really survive in, in, in the heat, um, etc.? Um, I think the, you know, the example of uh, Springs, where it's also, you know, one of the hottest parts of Australia, where Angus cattle thrive, is an indication that it's not heat is not really an issue, but it's, it may well be a perceived issue. Uh, there are obviously other issues, though. Uh, market specification, um, market specifications that require straight-bred um, Indicus cattle, for example, so that would exclude them uh, from those those. Markets. But I think uh, the main one, really, the main challenge is the extra managerial requirements to achieve adaptation of the north, particularly if they're translocated from um, southern environments, and to achieve survival, particularly in um, a, a very um, variable seasons and years. So in terms of some of the best management um, pr practices identified for bull selection, um, you know, the, the use of performance data and EBVs, and um, as was referred to uh, in an earlier talk today, there's, that information is generally more available um, for, um, uh, than might be in, uh, in, in some of the other breeds. Um, obviously, the importance of breeding soundness evaluation. Um, obviously, that, that's you know, all over Australia, but maybe even more so in the north where cattle are going to be put in more extensive situations, and hence maybe uh, the, the potential for performance due to structural issues might be a, 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 another a key issue. And of course maturity type to, to suit the environment and the markets um, that, that you're targeting. Issues in relation to relocation and adaptation of animals in the north, uh, of course um, quite a wide range in experiences in people uh, have achieved uh, with that, but in particular things like the age of uh, bulls when they're relocated was a, was a key issue. Uh, the time of the year of, of that relocation, again, because you're moving from, a, a, you know, in some cases, a, a, a very um, soft environment into, into a harder environment. Uh, nutrition post-transportation, uh, um, if the animals come from a, a, a grain feeding background if, in a, in a multi-vendor, obviously they can't just be brought into the north and put onto a tropical pasture. So those issues need to be taken into account. 
uh, stressors in relation to transportation over long distances, adaptation periods, you know, uh, three to six months would be a minimum and, and probably more likely, um, you know, 12 uh, are, the, are the reports where um, greater benefits have been achieved. Of course, uh, Dan Lynch does the, is the best thing, he actually breeds them up here and of course the, the, um, the, the cattle have got the, the opportunity to learn with the mother cow how to, how to handle the environment. That's, I guess, the optimal basis if they're translocated. I mean, a long adaptation period uh, is, is going to be critical. Uh, management during the first 12 to 18 months related to that adaptation period, so commonly cited as, as, a, as a critical requirement, uh, particularly in the dry season. Uh, removal of the bulls during the dry season to allow them to get condition back on, for example, an, another uh, uh, husbandry, um, external parasite control, ticks where that's an issue, buffalo fly, mosquitoes, uh, those cattle are going to be more susceptible to the stress due to, the, to external parasites. Uh, the vaccinations I've got there, um, in, in addition to the normal vaccination like 5 in 1, 7 in 1 and Vibrio, Pesti, etc. Uh, but tick fever vaccination if they're going into a ticky environment and um, ephemeral fever and, and botulism in, in environments where that's more likely to occur in the north than in, in the southern environments. Uh, some issues in relation to husbandry and management of bulls, uh, mixing of bull groups, uh, issues where there are feral bulls uh, in, the, in the same paddocks and, and mustering considerations. Uh, those tourist cattle are going to you know, need to be possibly in, in mustering, etc. So we've put uh, a lot of this information onto the Angus website. If you're looking for it, there's a little uh, dot there for Angus. I've, I've missed the mark there, but Angus in Northern Australia. Um, as we gather more information, uh, we'll be putting it on there. We've developed some custom recommendations for different zones in Australia uh, where we, there are different stressors. Um, and there's actually an online tool that can be used to look at that. So I encourage, if you're interested in this, to, to have a look at that. And back and comments are always welcome. We're certainly very interested to learn more about the management of tourist balls in, in, in the north. So thanks very much, Dennis.